Um, I want to welcome everybody to the Beach Soccer Worldwide presentation and talk number nine. Uh, Mr. Torres from Portugal, he's here from Braga, from our champion team. Hello. Hello, Tango. Angelo. It's a pleasure being here with you and with all the, the guys. Uh, I hope uh, everybody enjoy it. Thank you very much. Yes, I will enjoy a lot. Rui Delgato, our commentator from Nazare and uh, a specialist from all Winners' Cups in the last few years. Hello. Hello, Angelo. Uh, good afternoon to all the viewers of Beat Shocker Worldwide that I hope uh, are safe and sound due to this pandemic situation of COVID-9. Uh, and Angelo, I would like to uh, just a, a small introduction. Uh, first of all, to thank Beat Shocker Worldwide uh, for the inv invitation to be here as the technical uh, analysis of Euro Winners Cup 2019 with these outstanding references of uh, beach soccer that uh, are the commander Shirinzi, you, uh, also the beach soccer king Bruno Torres and the wall Sandro Spacarotella uh, for this technical analysis. The second two send my best regards to all beach soccer athletes, referees, coaches and dancers for uh, demonstrating that they are amazing human beings because also they are uh, tremendous athletes and intervenients of beach soccer, but they reveal um, to be assisting in the pandemic uh, COVID. Third, last but not least, to send uh, my congratulations to Mr. Juan Cusco for being appointed as sports advisor of the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations, showing uh, the strength of the sports. Him that I say is the vision, because I normally give nicknames to the persons, and it's the man who sees beyond. And uh, it says uh, a lot of this sport. Thank you very much, Rui. Thank you very much for your words. Then we have also last but at least Spaka, the wall. Hello, Spaka. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Angelo. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Rui, for all those nice words. And it's a pleasure to be here with all of you. Thanks. Perfect. So thank you very much also to Be Soccer Worldwide for organizing everything to helping us and we can start. Let's go. So, we are talking today about Euro Winners' Cup and the, some last editions. Here we have an absolutely fantastic picture from the last year, which Braga won with outstanding numbers. We want to talk today a little bit first about the past um, of of this outstanding tournament for, for all these um, European clubs. And we had this year in Nazare 44 teams. Um, all over all, we had 1,000, more than 1,000 goals, uh, an average of 9.05, and it was 112 matches. It's important to know for our spectators that we analyze later only all matches up from quarterfinals semi-finals and of course the finals. Here are some numbers of um, this year edition or last year edition of 2019. Um, we have 25% of goals were decided by one goal. So uh, this is not a very important number but it's interesting to know that in beach soccer we have a lot of goals and most of the matches are decided by more than one goals of course. Teams that scored first one, the game were 58%, also almost 60% of the teams which scored first, they win also the match. This is maybe also interesting for coaches um, to know, maybe we have to make a lot of pressure at the beginning of the game and so on. This is, these are numbers. Then we have teams winning by the end of the second period, won the game, this was 75%. So we see at the end of the match, beginning third period, it's important to be in front. And another important number is goals scored in zone four. This we will see also, of course, later is 48%. So most of the goals were scored in the, in the last nine meters in the penalty zone. Goal scored by open play. This means ball was in the game. It was open play is 67% and scored by combination play were 40%. Let's go ahead. 
event history. Here we have a little bit the numbers. The, the first slides of our presentation will show a little bit something about the teams and, and some numbers. Um, in San Benedetto, we had in 2013, 20 um, teams who starting this magnificent uh, event in the second year, already 22. Then we go ahead, 28, 32. And what we are seeing now that all European teams want to play this challenge. Maybe Rui, can you say something about these numbers? You are the yes. absolute specialist about numbers. <laughs> uh, don't know if I, uh, I'm a specialist of numbers, but I see the evolution of the sport. And the Euro Winners Cup uh, is a competition where we do see this kind of evolution. What you said was absolutely, absolutely right. It was a competition that started with uh, 20 teams and with the evolution of time and also other competitions uh, have made uh, other teams to want to enter this amazing competition. It's like the Champions League of clubs in beach soccer. So it started on uh, Italy in San Benedetto. Uh, there were uh, four editions um, until 2016, uh, the time when in 2017 it came to Portugal and opened also uh, a new competition. It's like a pre-qualifying system of all the teams that they were not champions on their countries to be able to participate in this kind of competition. All of that uh, to evolve beach, uh, beach soccer. Uh, you were saying that there are 44 teams in 2019, uh, but it's 36 teams uh, qualified directly and other eight teams that come from the Challenge Cup. So um, it reveals two things. More number of clubs um, resumes to a more number of players. So this is a fact that it's very interesting and shows the, um, the growing of beach soccer. Absolutely, thank you very much. So we go to the next slide. An absolutely fantastic picture. All the, the players, the referees, and all other ones who are the same on the stadium. Something unique. Then we have the goal average per year. Um, interesting to see that, again, a very spectacular sport in beach soccer. So the numbers are pretty same all the last years, only in Catania 2016. We had about 14 goals. Maybe we have also a small addition about this number. Yes, um, I believe it has two factors, uh, two variables that uh, can influence these uh, results. The first one, it's the number of teams uh, and the difference between the teams and the quality of the teams, okay? So in 2016, probably uh, there were all um, of the 32 teams uh, some teams that were stronger than other and the results on each game had uh, more than three or four or five goals of difference in the winning and uh, probably here in Portugal in Nazareth 2019 what we see is that uh, there are uh, teams that are more leveled and so um, the numbers are not so uh, strong or so high like in 2016 and this means the second variable that i was talking about that is everyone is working hard to get to a higher level and there are no easy games on beach soccer so this is uh, an aspect that i think it's fundamental to the viewer um, if it's in the tv or in the stadium that they know there are no easy games and they can go see uh, eight or nine games of beach soccer followed uh, and to see amazing uh, spectaculars, um, spectacle uh, games of beach soccer uh, at this time. Thank you, absolutely right. So we go to the next numbers. Here we have the, the winners of the Euro Winner Cup, the last uh, editions. And it's interesting, Bruno, we have three different countries. Eh? We have Italy, we have Russia, and we have Braga. What do you think, Bruno? What shows this? Uh, 
it shows that uh, uh, only th three countries win the the competition. Uh, they are the three countries that are the, at the, the top of the ranking uh, right now. Okay, we know that uh, at the national team team level, uh, there are uh, other countries like like Switzerland that the the level is so high, but uh, at the clubs at clubs uh, it means that. Uh, uh, in the last uh, few years, uh, Portugal and Russia uh, are a little bit stronger because they are winning everything. Only one here uh, Absolutely. Uh, was winning by, by uh, an Italian team. Absolutely, uh, Bruno. And what we will see later is the, the three lost ones, Braga. You will talk a lot about this in the next few uh, hours. So you will explain a lot and we will see a lot and we will see that Braga is absolutely a, a champion who deserves to, to win the last three editions. Uh, Spaka, you know Italian team very, very much and very good, the Italian league. And you remember 2016, Viareggio winning. Was it only because it was in Catania or they were so strong? No, I believe they were so strong. They had an amazing year. They won everything this year like the, the cup, yeah. the championship and the Euro winners. And also they have the most difficult way to, to go to the final. They didn't go, they weren't lucky with the draw. I think they, I don't remember exactly, but I think they beat also Braga or Crystal or at least one of them mm -hmm. and went to the final well deserved. Uh, of course, Italy is not far behind the, those countries like Portugal and, and Russia, they have uh, especially also with, with Catania for many years. And now some of days they, they have a lot of strong teams. So it's not a, not a surprise that an Italian team won this Perfect. competition. Perfect. Rui, what do you think next year? Who will win uh, this edition? Well, it's, uh, it's not easy to, to say because the actual conditions of the world right now can reveal teams that are not in the top of their uh, abilities and uh, it's, it's not easy to see uh, what will happen. But I do believe that there are some challenges that um, these teams have for the next months. Um, Braga has won the three uh, last Euro Winners Cup. And in 2016, they w didn't went to the final. They lost on penalty kick shootout. Uh, and I think they could be in the final against uh, Viareggio. Um, but um, what I do see is that the first Euro Winners Cup 2013, Lokomotiv, Russian, had won the competition in Europe and were uh, world champions with the national team. And in 2019, Portugal, also world champion, and Braga is uh, the winner of Euro Winners Cup. And in the ranking right now, uh, Portugal is the first in the ranking and Braga is the first in the ranking of clubs. So in between two victories of Crystal, uh, one win of Viareggio. What I see of this is that these are the strongest national leagues in Europe and probably in the whole world. And uh, it reflects on the results uh, that we see in all these competitions of Euro Winners Cup. Absolutely, thank you very much. So let's go forward to auto stats. <clears throat> the present, let's go. So in 2019 edition, um, I was counting and we have to talk about quarterfinals, semifinals and final matches. This, um, we are talking only about these matches. We have only 3% of, uh, of goals were um, scored in zone, from zone one. This was Donna who has a free kick and he scores from behind. Then we have some goals from zone two, but most of goals zone three and zone four. So um, probably 90% oh, of, of, of goals in the adversary um, field. And if we go to the next one, here, this is a statistic for me very important. Here we see the champion Braga and they score many, many, many goals more in zone three than in zone four. When I watched the video, uh, Bruno, 
Um, for me, it's clear. It's the one against one. You have so many um, world-class players who can do the one against one. Boquinha, Felipe, Jordan, the, the Martin brothers. And they do it all the time. They try to win a one against one. And if they pass, of course, a big goal chance. And if they don't pass, maybe they were fouled and they can shoot. Bruno, what do you tell me about this? Yeah, uh, for sure. Uh, it's uh, uh, good numbers. Uh, I think uh, you are absolutely right. Uh, the player ability to keep the ball uh, in that zone uh, is fundamental. Uh, we have strong players in one against one uh, and with high pass quality. Uh, so they have the ability to do combinations in short spaces where there are too many defenders. Uh, the team mobility that allows to create more options um, uh, is also an important factor. Uh, we steal many balls in that zone. We have players that are very clever, very fast, very powerful. They, they steal balls. The free kicks, for sure. The free kicks. And um, I think... Uh, the fact of uh, our pivots, uh, they come out a lot from zone four. They are not uh, stand still all the time. They move a lot. They, they bring the defender out. They, they provoke situations that um, can, can, uh, can take us to, to have more free kicks. Yes. And uh, maybe in the 2-2 two -two situation, sometimes we finish the, the play right after the first pass from the goalkeeper. And normally the first pass goes to the zone three. So I think that, uh, that uh, some, some, some key points that can, may explain the, uh, this kind of number. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Can we go to the next slide, please? Here. Um, I have this statistic, what I think is very important to know. And also for future coaches, a little bit to say how I have to train beach soccer. We have open play and set easy goals. So open play, we have 67% and in set pieces, 33%. For me, this was a little bit uh, a surprise because in the past, when I started, for example, the first World Cup, which we played with Switzerland in 2009 in Dubai, we had maybe almost 75% were set piece goals uh, in beach soccer, and now it changed. Spocker, um, do, you, do you agree that, that the game changed in the last years? Yes, for sure. For sure, the, the, the game changed so much, not only about the intensity, also about the tactics. And yeah, it's completely different. Yeah, I didn't know that it's 75% in, the, in 2009, but yeah, for sure the game changed and also it's, uh, it's about the quality of the, of the free kicks that, uh, that we had in 2009. We have one player that scores every free kick, so this helps. But yeah, the game changed for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Maybe the next slide gives us not good information, please. Here, for me, Rui, you see, very, very interesting again. Braga is an absolute champion in all categories, in open play, game, in open play and in set pieces. We see that they, they lead almost all, all categories. And for me, it's clear, um, it's a real champion, Braga, and the numbers show everything. Rui. Uh, yes, Angelo. Uh, the numbers show, show everything, but I would like to add one thing that I think it's uh, fundamental. To see these numbers and to have this uh, statistical of open play and set pieces. We are talking about the teams uh, and as we know the set pieces, the free kicks and uh, all the, the standard balls, um, the referee has to make a foul and to give a foul. So there is an evolution on the interpretation of the laws of the game and so probably uh, the fact that the referees are also more fitted to evaluate all uh, the game plays uh, gives less uh, free kicks or some fouls in this kind of zones, okay? So, um, normally the teams have to get some strategies to make more goals and we see uh, absolutely that Braga with 12 goals in open play shows 
the two sets of triunvirate that they do have with uh, Jordan, B, and Leo. And when they are substituted, they stay with Boquinha, Philippe, and Bruno Xavier. It's this uh, fluctuation of substitutes that also with the individual characteristics and qualities of these players makes a tremendous um, collective consciousness of this team. Of course, leader by uh, Bruno Torres, uh, who I call the beach soccer king. We will see this again later, yes. For me also, um, please, the next, next slide, and then I will talk a little bit about Bruno. Um, here we have um, only a, another slide, typology of goals in set pieces. And we see that free kicks, we had 65. Kickoff, we have 20. Penalties, we have uh, 10. But corner kicks and throw-ins, a little bit less. Can you go to the next slide, please? It shows us a little bit better. Here, um, as we see, for example, corner kicks. Braga makes no goals, but free kicks, they scored a lot. So we have to come back with the one against one. And uh, Bruno, maybe you can tell us a little bit why corner kicks or, for example, um, throw-ins are not so important in, in the last period. Is it, uh, which are the reasons for this? Maybe uh, is, is it uh, physically a problem or, or maybe tactically or maybe also mentally? Uh, no, uh, I, it's one as aspect that, uh, that we want to improve. We want to get better, for sure. Uh, but uh, we have to, to know that uh, we have uh, players that physically are not so strong and so, uh, and so high. And uh, nowadays, the defense, um, uh, they, they do a strong defense uh, in this kind of situation. And it's very difficult to, to score. And uh, as we know, we, we, we can make goals in open plays. And uh, in this kind of situation, we, we, we want uh, among uh, everything else, we want to stay with the ball. So we, we prefer to do a corner kick or uh, a throw in, uh, trying to stay with the ball to create uh, open plays and other situations, because we know that we can do goals right, like that. So we don't need to, to take risks and suffer counterattacks uh, against teams that are stronger uh, defensively in, in, uh, in set pieces, and they can uh, take advantage uh, of the fact uh, uh, that our team is all in attack. So I think that that's one, one, uh, one key point, but for sure, it's one thing that why we are trying to get better. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Bruno. And this from, a, from an absolute leader, from as a defense uh, specialist, one of the best defense players in the world and also one of the best leaders. I will, I will follow up um, this point of view from leadering or hierarchy in the team a little bit later on. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Here, typology of goals in open play. This is for me as a coach very important and I think also for my specialists here. We have combination moves around 40% or in, in these last matches that we scored the goals with combination moves. Then we have one versus one, 16. We have um, goalkeeper goal kicks, 15. We have goalkeeper passing to, to the side, 12%. Then Something very interesting for me, after recovery of the ball highly, as a high defense, stealing a ball, we have 10% and we have goalkeeper shooting on the goal, 1% and then we have counterattack, 8% of all goals scored like this. Please, the next uh, slide. Here, for me, very, very important and here I want to discuss also a little bit with, with, Turo, with uh, Bruno Torres and with my guests. We have Braga, again, absolute leader in almost all categories. But for me, interesting to see combination play, very good. Then we have counter-attack, they are leaders, and stealing very high the ball, uh, defense very high. Bruno, please tell me something about, about uh, this, this change of tactics about Braca to be very flexible in their movements 
and 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 scoring a lot by different um, um, modes, methods. Yes, I, I can see a few reasons for that. Uh, in goal rec uh, recovery, the balls. The main reasons I think is because we we have a team that uh, that that uh, has a strong pressure uh, all the time, high pressure, strong pressure. We 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 like to do that uh, in every matches. We feel comfortable and. Uh, and the perfect lecture uh, and timing from uh, players like Leo, Bebo, Kinya, that uh, are very explosive and fast, uh, uh, they they can uh, steal uh, many balls to the to the players. And then when they steal, they have the quality to 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 score. To score. Um, at the counter attack, uh, the main reasons I I think uh, it's the the pressure uh, also. And I think that uh, Rafa uh, lecture and uh, and game view is very important. The goalkeeper, because uh, he knows uh, when he has to to speed the the play. You know, uh, if all opponents are in our missile, uh, we must try to to do the counter attack because we have we have space in their back. But uh, if the other team are more uh, balanced. On the field, we try to to develop, uh, organize the attack with the process that that we train. So I think that the, these are the the main reason for for that two points, uh, for sure, for sure. Bruno, for me, the Braga is a champion. You said lecture of the team, quality of the players, quality of goalkeeper, but for me, this flexible of 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 um, of um, of tactics. This is also, imp uh, you need a leader for this. You need somebody on the field who shows the players which way we go. Everybody has to go in the same direction. Everybody has to, ha to, to, to be under one leader. And for me, uh, Bruno, I want to congratulate you. I think you are the clear leader of this team and also Portugal, they win a lot because I think they have one strategy and they follow all one uh, one person or, or one strategy and I have to congratulate you. I think this is not only uh, it's not only happened like this. It's 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 a plan. It's a strategy and I have to congratulate you. Um, Rui, do you agree what I say? Yes, I, uh, I, I would like to um, to add one thing that is important also. We cannot forget that uh, the first winning of Braga in the Euro Winners' Cup, one of the assistant coaches was Ramiro Amarelo. And as we know, is a real master also um, in beach soccer. Uh, I remember that final against Arthur Music and Braga was losing. Uh, and Ramiro made a change and at that time and a risk. He uh, put it in the field, Bruno Novo, in the position two, normally where Bruno Torres normally plays. But to uh, add some uh, depth to the attacking uh, position of Braga. So I believe it started there with Ramiro and remembering that uh, in the early years of the decade, Bruno Torres also played with Ramiro with Barcelona in the Mundialito of clubs. Uh, and therefore they have been learning mutually with the tactics, the positioning and all of beach soccer. The second aspect is the fact that Bruno Torres is a real leader, but he also has the help of a family member, his brother, Antonio Torres. And uh, when Bruno Torres is in the field, Antonio is the extension of him in the bench of Braga. And this strategy and this, um, this conjunction of uh, variables are the most important factor in the strength of, uh, of Braga. Thank you. Spaka, you think leadership important with tactics Absol and changements? Absolutely important. If it is one leader or it can be two or three leaders, but a team needs to have leaders that the team can follow. And this is, this is most important. If you see games or also in the trainings, Teams without the leader, they never push themselves to the limit, and it's so, so important to have a leader. 
Yes, pushing to limit. I agree 100%. Yes, and we see always when, when Braca plays, uh, they are all going 100% uh, to the limit. We go to the next um, slide, please. And very nice. And here for me a little bit the key facts of, of uh, competition winner Braga. For me is, is clear. It's the combinative play, ball recovery, very high. They are the only team who could steal and score very high. And then it's interesting to see no goalkeeper throw out. So um, the goalkeeper plays with the foot, he plays with the hands, but most goals in this, in this period for, of, of, the, of the tournament, they played um, without goalkeeper throwouts. And then a lot of free kicks, of course, because they win or they try to the one against one game. And, and if, they, if they win it, goal chance. If they are fouled, they can have the possibility to uh, have a free kick. Most open play goals. And for me also, something very, very important is the experience of the team, the consistent squad. Um, Braga, the last years, Bruno was the boss and he has always the same players. And his leadership, very important. Rui, what do you think about experience? Is it important or can we change every year the team? Uh, the numbers uh, says to us that if we have a consistent team, we have the more chances of getting higher results. And I can give you uh, two sides of the same co uh, coin. We have Braga that has a consistency in the members of the team. And normally, and this is not a critic, okay, um, Catania is always changing the players every year. Uh, amazing players that Catania has, but normally, uh, in these competitions of Europe, they are not being able to get further. And so this is an example of a consistent team in members and another team with amazing individual players, but with the changes every year, they don't get the, consi the consistent in the results. Mm -hmm. Bruno, you agree what I said yeah. here, what I, my summary? of being a yeah, champion? First, first of all, let me thank you for all the, the kind words. Uh, it means a lot coming from, uh, from, uh, from you and from uh, Pat and Rui, for sure. Uh, and yes, I agree. I agree with all this, uh, these points that you mentioned and uh, about the, the leadership. Uh, all, all I can say is uh, in Braga, it's a shared leadership. Everyone has freedom of speech, knowing that uh, more freedom uh, is uh, you have to have more responsibility. So uh, the purpose uh, should be only one all the time, and that's the key point of our leadership. Uh, there, there are no secrets. Uh, there is a great union, uh, a great uh, friendship between all, and uh, among all, uh, a great respect. So uh, that's that's uh, our our way uh, of work and. It's get, it's, we, we, are, we are getting the results, uh, thankfully. Absolutely right. Perfect. The next slide, please. And here we're coming already to the videos, and this is for me very important. So we don't see only stats, so we can see a little bit the tactics of Braca. Here we have Pokinia. He tries to get the one against one. He wins the one against one, and he scores. But we watch it again. For me, uh, Bruno, look the other players. He is the last man on the field. And nevertheless, he is going one against one. <coughs> he has the danger to lose the ball, but he scores. Tell me, what are you doing with Bokinia? Yeah, in this, in this type of situations, we have a high confidence in, in some players. Uh, Bokinia is, is one of them. Uh, we trust him, but uh, we are always prepared for everything, even for the loss of the ball, and to have to, to recover quickly. Uh, okay, uh, he's the last man, he's one against one, but uh, as we can see, uh, all the players are moving, are giving him other options if he needs. So, uh, if all our players uh, are moving, uh, the direct opponent will be focused 
uh, on them. And then Boquinha will, will uh, surely be one against one and not in a double marking uh, situation. So uh, he feels comfortable, he, he has confidence, and uh, in 10, I think uh, maybe he wins nine for sure. Fantastic. Spaka, tell me, how many players in the world do this? Go one against one and uh, without having any, any defense behind him? Not too many, of course, yeah. You, you have to take the risk, but it's, it's also it's risky, of course, but the advantage, if you see in this scene, he has a lot of space because the other players are moving, as, as uh, Tode said before. And he also can go to both sides. He, has a, he can shoot with right and left foot. So it's, it's a good position for a dribbling, but of course very risky. Rui, you as a commentator, you saw a lot of matches. You see a lot of these scenes. What do you say about this? Yes, uh, you, are, you are right. It's been more than 800 games commentating in TV. So I see a lot of these movements of Braga and other teams. And there is uh, one factor that I believe uh, it's um, an advantage to Braga. One thing is that they study the individual characteristics of the players of other teams. And in this picture, what we see is Boquinha uh, waiting for the Braga carousel to happen, where Philippe went to the corner, Bernardo Botelho went to the position five, and Bruno Xavier is making the pass like an overlap to the left uh, corner. But in front of him, he has Anton Skarin, an amazing player, world champion, uh, but a, a slower player if he gets the ball and uh, steals the ball to Boquinha, which allows uh, Braga to recover. So Boquinha, when he has uh, Skarin in front of him, he knows he's faster than Skarin and he could risk, and he won the risk by making the goal and making the, the goal scoring. Thank you very much. Uh, Bruno, is this the future of the sport? Is it the future that, that you need players like this to do this? Or do you think, no, we can also be a champion without players like this? Because you have a lot of players like this in your team. You have not only him, you have Felipe, you have the, the Martin brothers. Yeah. Even Jordan can win always a one against one. Is this the future? I think that this is important for the future. I think we need more of this in beach soccer. Okay, uh, it's possible to win without this, with a, a very and strong tactical work, uh, with very uh, tactical solutions, but uh, the ability to go one against one, it's a weapon that I think that uh, in the future will help a lot of teams to, to solve some problems. And I think that that's uh, one thing that uh, a few years ago we see more and now we see less. Maybe mm -hmm. it's more difficult because the physical level of the game is higher and higher. And so the, the defenders are more prepared. The teams tactically are more strong uh, at the defense. They don't give uh, a lot of space. But I think that this is one thing that must uh, have to be worked more. One against one, it's, it's very important for, for the future. Uh, in my Ab opinion. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I think it's also a mentality, a, a mental aspect. If Pochino, if he, he thinks too much or if he is not self-confident, he will never go in one-to-one -one because maybe he's afraid to lose the ball, to, to, to get a goal. But he knows maybe also when I lose the ball, I can get it back. I am athletically perfect, um, ready. I can uh, recover the ball without problem. And we see also at right side, there is another player um, who is waiting a little bit. He's going now back. You see here, I think it's Jordan. And, and no, then he's... Xavier, Bruno. Yeah, Bruno Xavier. He is there. And maybe if he lose the ball, he could help. So it's, uh, it's absolutely fantastic. And for me, also interesting to see that... Uh, has a lot of different possibilities um, to score. Can we go to the next video, please? <clears throat> Here, um, we have again Boquinha taking the ball from the zone four, uh, one, going um, to zone three, and then we have a, 
a small um, attacking or a, a small battle, but Braga win the ball. And then we have a, a nice combination play, um, which Boginia scores. Bruno, you want to commentate a little bit and sh sh tell me what you, what you see? Yeah, for me, the, there is a key point. Uh, first, uh, I want to say that in this kind of situations, we, we try to accelerate the attack, trying to, to gain a few meters quickly and uh, achieving a few seconds of superiority uh, close to the, the opposite goal. Uh, then we also try to, to attack the opponent when he is not fully organized, okay? And the key point for me is after that, uh, the quality and the lecture of the player does the rest. Uh, because in these kind of situations, uh, they will see who is free and they have the quality to, to do the, the good pass to score. Uh, also, as I told before, uh, Rafa uh, is fundamental in this situation because He's seeing, he sees all the, the field, he sees that the, the other team is not balanced and he, he puts the ball fast to Bokinga to, to go front and, and try to score goal. Absolutely, absolutely. Spaka, again, we have a small, like a con it's, it seems like a counter-attack and Bokinga, he goes forward like a, like, a, like a Harley Davidson, you know what we say. And then we see this after losing the ball quickly, we see this pass uh, on the left side and then the combination and, and the score. Um, you know how difficult it is. And uh, what, say, tell me something about the quality of passes also and uh, for understanding for everybody who is uh, um, looking, how difficult it is. Can you say some words to, to, to this situation? Yes, of course. So. It's very impressive uh, at which speed this is done. So you, you can see they always attack the free space. So first Pokinia with the ball in his foot, he looks where is the free space and brings the fall, ball forward very quickly. Uh, then also without the ball, Leo and Pokinia afterwards. First Pokinia plays to the center and Leo wins the one against one, which is important of course. But many other strikers maybe would have taken the ball, lifted and, and tried themselves. So what they do is pass the ball once more. And then, this is also a key point, they react very quickly and run into the free space without the ball to give the... Who was it there? I don't know who it was who, who played the pass to Leo again. So give the option to do a good pass. And Pokino does exactly the same. They don't do one action and uh, stand still. They keep moving and they react very fast. They are ready physically, but not only physically, also in the head. After the ball goes to the next guy, they immediately look where is the free space to give an option to run there. And very often they are quicker than the defender. This is also a good job, I think, from the, from the coach to prepare the team that they are always, always ready mentally as well. Perfect. Always Thank you. Score goals. Thank you, Taka. Yes, I, I would just like to add uh, two things. First, uh, one of the key facts that you mentioned before, uh, it's the uh, no goalkeeper uh, throwing out. It starts with a good put of the ball in play with Rafa Padilla in Boquinha. So that made a fast transition from defense to offense. And that uh, allowed Boquinha to get in front in the central zone and uh, made the team of Kappa Pelots to close the central um, corridor, which, which uh, allowed to open in the sideways. Uh, as we see, Jordan Suarez then makes the pressure with the carrier of the ball and left Leo Martins in the back all alone and Braga made a superior uh, number of players with a 2-1 um, offensive uh, finalization. So I also uh, think this is something that Braga does very well. They normally have um, superiority in defense and in offense. And this is a perfect example uh, of what we are talking about. That begins in the goalkeeper and then ends with the two against one in the zone four uh, of um, in front of the goalie. 
Fantastic. Thank you very much. We have another video which is very, very, very interesting. Here um, we have a playing back. It means Braga is also, you know, what I like is also if you are in tech and you see no solution, they go back, no problem. And now we see another phase of Braga. The goalkeeper coming out, playing to, to Martin Prater and he shoots from, from zone three. So we see how, the, uh, how many possibilities create this team. Um, Bruno, you told me you play 3-1, you play 2-2, up to your players, you let them their freedom. I like this. Tell me something about more. Yeah, uh, luckily we have players that, that allow us to play on 2-2 and uh, on 3-1, keeping the high level. Uh, the different char characteristics uh, of our players give us that possibility. Uh, in a 2-2 system, uh, when we start to build a, a move, uh, sometimes we have to adjust our movement uh, according uh, to the opponent's actions. And uh, sometimes we have to change it to, to three and two. The most important thing is that we want to keep the ball. We have to mm -hmm. have the ball. Mm -hmm. And uh, if uh, it doesn't work in 2-2, we try in 3-1. We can change uh, systems easily. We know or we try to know uh, when, uh, when to do it. And uh, uh, as I say, luckily, we, we, we have that, uh, that uh, uh, capacity. You know what I like, Bruno? I like that flexibility. Um, this is self-confidence self at highest level. You, you trust your players and you know that they see the game and they can read the game. And you let them this flexibility. I think this shows highest level of, of football. Rui, what do you think about what I said now? Yes, uh, it's a fact, Angelo. Um, I believe there, there are two factors, empathy and altruism that Bruno Torres have. Okay? He's, he's like the king. It's in front of his troops mm -hmm. uh, and knows uh, that he will give uh, his chest to the bullets uh, and to defend his team. So the team corresponds to what are his needs. And uh, uh, the third aspect, it's the freedom because mm -hmm. it allows the players to decide because the confidence that the leader has on the decisions of the players are key parts to solve the problem. Here is a game uh, against Delta. And as we remember uh, in this game against Delta, in the, the game before, uh, Delta lost the two goalkeepers uh, mm -hmm. in that game. And it was mm -hmm. a, a different game. This is the second period uh, in the beginning of the second period, and Braga already was winning uh, for three uh, no, uh, no uh, goals. And uh, uh, Braga made a management of the physical effort that was mm -hmm. fundamental to play in the next day against Kappa Pelotas. And we were to talking here of Braga, but uh, we, we also analyzing all from the quarterfinals. There are great, uh, great uh, teams like uh, Spartak, Lokomotiv, uh, Catania, and the finalist KP Lotz. But the physical part that Braga um, normally shows, it comes from the intelligence of managing the moments of the game. And mm -hmm. these are the key parts to the victory of Braga. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I agree totally. And for me personally, I have to see great leadership um, needs trust, trust to, to your players and trust also that they, and belief in your players. Spaka? Yes, absolutely. I, I think the, the coach can prepare a team, can prepare the players with the tactics and everything, but some when it comes to a point in the game that the, the, player, the players will decide the game with their decisions. Of course, always respecting the tactics, but if you have a team with, with players of such high quality and especially also creativity, it's also the, it makes the team stronger if, if the players have some room to, 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 do to, something uh, they, to they succeed do, this, to yeah, do, exactly, yeah. this creativ creativity and, and decide the game. Fantastic. We have another video. Here, 
we see Baraka possession of ball, what Bruno says, a long ball, and then again back. We have here, for me, very interesting, uh, the, uh, Martin, he, he, he keeps the ball and he see, oh, no solution, and he has no problem to go back. This is, for me, very interesting. No problem. They want possession of ball. They are so intelligent. And if they lose the ball at this moment here, we have a small, we see everybody is attacking 100%, attacking, 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 take the ball. And now we have a quick attack and score. In this, in this video, we see all good moments of a fantastic teams. We have possession of ball. We have intelligent um, um, choices. But we have also losing of ball, but then reacting, transition, going back, going in the right room, again, attacking the ball, having the ball again, and then playing in front and doing a goal. Uh, Bruno, I said everything or you have to add something? <laughs> No, I think that you you said everything. Uh, in these kind of situ situations, we we all, always try to give uh, our ball carrier the best and the greatest number of uh, possible solutions, so that he can decide. In this case, uh, if you can see when B is with the ball, he he he, he can go to the left or to the right. Okay, uh, in one against one. Uh, he can go to the left and, and shoot cross, and Leo is at the, the far post already, already prepared to deflect. Waiting, yes. Okay. Yeah. You, if he comes to the right, because Jordan is coming to the right to bring his marker with him also. At the, at the, same, time, at the same time, Jordan is balancing the team and gives the option for, of a long passing uh, for shooting from outside. And uh, they can also uh, pass to Philippe, who is in the pivot area, uh, where he can finish or combine it with B at this moment. Philippe at pivot, Leo at second post, Jordan is coming to the right to give another option and balancing the team. So we have several options. Everybody knows where they have to, to be. And, and then their quality and create, uh, creativity uh, do the rest. In, in this at this moment, you can see they they run fast. When we lose the ball, the the one thing that I, that I tell them all the time: first thing is run back. Then mm -hmm. you can search the opponent while you are running. And you can see when the Jordan Suarez is, is picking the ball to to do the throw in, Jordan is already running back. Leo is already running back. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the, the characteristics that, that I like to, to work with them. And this is your handwriting as a defense player. Yeah, as a defense player, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rui, you want to add something? Uh, yes, Angelo. Um, first moment where um, B has Philip Crack in front of him. is a very big player, okay? Uh, and Paulinho Barbosa is cutting the, um, the pass to the center field, in the center zone, to the pivot. So he plays back mm -hmm. to Jordan. Mm -hmm. It's giving him an assistance, okay? But uh, after that pressure of Kappa Pelotz, and Kappa Pelotz, even though they lost 6-0 um, no to, to this final to Braga, uh, are not some any team. It's a, a team that has a, a very cons consistent base of, the, um, of Poland national team with Marcin Stanislavski, and that in 2016 win the European qualifying um, uh, for the World Championship. Mm -hmm. And in the year before, they stay in the third position of Euro Winners' Cup. So what they have done is to brought Jordan Suarez and Paulinho Barbosa, two Brazilian players, to give some depth to um, the offensive uh, player of lots, but also defense consistent, but they cannot do everything uh, all by themselves. They really have good pivots. Kubiak, it's a, a, a great player, but it's slower. Um, we see him give the ball to Jordan Swash, and then Braga gives uh, like with an X in, in the defense of Kappa Pelotz. B came uh, back to recover the ball and to launch immediately 
on the front. What this says about Braga is that they need to have the possession of the ball. And I remember, because I played with Hernani Madruga, as you remember, he was the captain of uh, I remember. the national team. He, only, he always said that do not give the ball away, but because it costs a lot to get it back. So you. Braga, yes, you're right. And also Braga. a good defense player. Also a good defense player. Yes. <laughs> you remember him. Yes. <laughs> we have another slide. We have another slide. Future. We have to come to an end. And for me, um, a small summary, which I made after having all these stats, for me, a very important point is experience. We talked about it, Bruno told it, having the same team gives you more chances, gives you more trust, gives more self-confidence. And I think it's an important point for all teams in the future. Then of course, quality in set pieces. We know Braga was a leader in set pieces. They scored a lot. It's possible to train it. So uh, my advice to all coaches and all spectators do it. Then of course, in the future for me personally, open play goals, combinations and uh, quick high defense recovery, very high is very important. And of course this one against ones, which we talked about it, but at the end, and I think Bruno will give me, and Spaka and Rui also, they will agree with me. Athletics is very important. And the, the game development is in very, very fast developing. In the last 20 years, um, I saw the game going from, from zero to hero. You know, I saw it going up. And for me personally, is this explosive, fast, dynamic first meters are very important. And... Um, maybe a last word for this, Bruno. What do you think? What do you think for the future? Yeah, I agree. I agree totally with you. And uh, at high level, all players have to be top athletes uh, uh, at the present and in the future. The physical condition of the game uh, is getting higher and higher. And sometimes the game's uh, sequence are brutal. You know it. Uh, in addition, sometimes we we play under extremely difficult weather conditions with less than 24 hours to recover. So we have to, to work our body and our mind a lot, a lot. That's for sure. Thank you very much. Spaka, you agree? I agree totally with you both. I think you said it. And it's not that 20 years ago, the, the players were less talented than, than today, but what changed is really this athletic probably also the trainings and uh, it's, it's gotten more professional and this athletic and fast dynamic in the first meters is, is just too important. Thank you. Rui? Yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, all of these uh, opinions, experience, uh, quality in set pieces, everything that you say. Um, but uh, would like to, to have, Angelo, um, the organization of the teams, okay? Uh, it's uh, very important that the clubs as uh, almost like professional structures that can allow the evolution of the teams and also the players. Because it's, this is like a symbiosis, uh, a, certain, a synergy between what is the club as an institution and the club as a, a team. Okay, and this is very, very important. And another thing is that, and since we were talking about the, the leaders and the, the persons that organize, of course, we see um, you uh, with Crystal, also with Swiss national team. Uh, we see Torres with Braga and also with the national teams. Spaka, I remember him in the final against Braga with Arthur Music and trying to organize him and Anderson um, the team of uh, Ukraine uh, with uh, also Sidorenko uh, players that have uh, some uh, a lot of experience but this is a key part to the evolution of uh, the sport okay and since there are some modification to the laws of the game you remember when the goalkeepers uh, could go out of the area and then turn back and get with the ball I believe we are entering um, a stage that in the 5-4 or in the 2-2 tactical players, 
um, I believe we need to change a little bit that so it does not slow the game. Something like power play in uh, hockey, ice hockey or basketball, where the goalkeeper, when he gets out of uh, his area, um, we have to finish the, the play, okay? These are some, some things that uh, in the future, I'm sure that um, Beach Shocker will be uh, seeing to probably make or not some changes. Thank you very much. Um, for having like a last word, um, what it's not here, it's leadership. I think I, uh, it's a little bit experience, but leadership. And again, at this point, I want to congratulate Bruno Torres for these absolutely fantastic results, not only with, uh, with, with Braga, but also with national teams. And um, go ahead, go ahead. We try all our best to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to bring you down of this situation, but it will be hard. And um, Spaka, thank you very much for, for joining to this, um, to this presentation. And yes, um, uh, interesting the future. Rui, I want to thank you for all your high quality, um, high quality experience and comments. So. I thank you very much, and I hope to see you soon again on the field. Okay, you, Angelo. Angelo, it's been it, it, it's been it was a, a privilege. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Uh, sorry, Rui. Uh, Angelo, thanks thanks for the opportunity and the kind uh, and for the kind words. Uh, lots of re respect for for all history of of strong connection to the beach soccer, and huge huge contribution uh, to the to the development. Uh, congratulations for all the work uh, done at national teams and clubs. Uh, Spark, uh, much respect uh, as a player and as a person. We don't know a lot, uh, but you are a top player and with a, a top conduct in all situations, uh, an example. And we, uh, many years of mutual respect and admiration. Uh, it was a pleasure for sure. Thank you. Angelo, uh, thank you also, Bruno. Uh, we normally uh, speak a lot. Uh, it's normal here <laughs> in Portugal. But uh, to thank you, Angelo, for, for also the invitation. It's been a tremendous privilege. And to tell you that this work of statistical uh, management of the game, it could help a lot in the TV trans transmissions. Imagine a transmission that's a great event, as we know, and to have all this data uh, in local to give to uh, the people that is seeing uh, at home. All of the evolution of beach soccer play, uh, passes also through the media because this is an amazing sport and all the persons that are involved are amazing human beings. Thank you very much. So, good. thank Spot you. I, I also, after all those nice words, maybe I also want to say th thank you to, to you guys. It was nice with, the, with beach soccer experts like you to be uh, to be talking and of course also totally I can always only give this back to you so much respect for you uh, what you what you did uh, over the last I don't know how many years you won so many titles so for sure a big idol in Portugal and also for for um, other players all over the world and yeah. yeah Rui we will talk again in another day I hope and let's hope we can go back as soon as possible to to go and play what we love to play beach soccer so i'm happy to to see you soon yes let me tell you to all of you that nazare misses you all and misses the stadium downstairs so we hope that very soon we are all together here <laughs> in nazare okay goodbye thank Bye. you goodbye thank you goodbye <laughs>